Damn, my voice is going. Woohoo. Ha ha. Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how to do this simple collage for beginners. And I'll be going over my main techniques that I do in my collages or renders. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you do, please give it a like and share it to your friends. And let's get started. So for this video, I'm just going to use the rectangular selection tool on a new layer and fill that with light sky blue. And then just crop in the image to the size that I want. Every Photoshop have built in brushes and then you can select it from the menu right here and I always like to use the square brushes for shadows and frames and for a lot of things and then if you press down on shift you can create straight horizontal or vertical lines if you select the layers that you want to align and then you go to the top you can select the alignment so that we can make sure that the top layer is perfectly centered with the bottom layer and you can do all kinds of different alignments and then if you want to paint diagonal lines then you'll have to press shift again and then and click from point A to point B. Another way to check if your layers are aligned is to drag one of those rulers or guidelines and then you can easily check if it's aligned. So next I'm just going to be painting the left frames and then duplicating that layer and then flipping it on the other side so that it's perfectly symmetrical. And I could have done this from the beginning but I'm an idiot. I get all of my images or textures from Google and it's a process really of trying to find the perfect images with the right perspectives or images that I can distort and work with. I always experiment with different blended modes because you can get different effects but most common ones I use are overlay, multiply, soft light, hard light and color dodge. I usually just copy and paste images from Google if they don't have a transparent background but if they do then you would have to save it and then just drag it into Photoshop. Something that I do a lot is if I want to fill up this space with a lot of people, then I'll use the ones that I already have and then I'll just flip them or change its color or size. And I'll do this with a lot of things and anything really that just presents an opportunity for me to save time. I'm just going to turn the figures into black and white so that I don't have to worry about colors if they match or not. And there is no focus on people, it's just more about the architecture or the space. So whenever you're doing any of these layer effects, always do them from the menu on the bottom right. Never do it from the top left because if you do it from the bottom right, then you can always delete that layer. If you change your mind, you can adjust it. And then if you're 100% sure, you can merge it with the layer. But if you do it from the top left, then you can't really delete it or undo. Next we have levels and I use levels to make things darker or lighter but be careful about this because it can make the layer look less detailed and if you press on control and select the layer that you want the levels to affect then it will create a clipping mask only to that layer. With textures that I need to cover a large space, I like to duplicate them and then merge them into one big layer because otherwise if you drag it, if you drag the layer, it would look really pixelated or distorted. Layer masks are amazing. Just add it from the menu on the bottom right to any layer before you erase any parts of that layer. The basic principle of layer mask is that if you paint in black, you're hiding and if you're painting in white, then you're showing. So always paint on the layer mask and not the actual layer. So so you can see that I've selected some cutouts from the wood panel to make it look more collaged or open and then I am painting in black on the layer mask to hide it. And this is really great if you decide that you need a little bit more and that you wish you didn't cut that layer. One cool approach to deleting all the white part of a layer is to select it, press on blending options and then if you move this white arrow to the left, you're taking all the white off your layer and then if you move this black to the right, you're taking off 
off all of the black in your layer but don't go overboard with this because all colors have white and black in them so if you go over then you can delete important things off your layer Last but not least is if you add a new layer and then press control on a different layer, that layer is actually now selected. So on the top layer, you can add shadows or highlights without affecting the original layer. So that is it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you do, please subscribe if you're new here and share this video to your friends. And don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me your favorite color. I'm Rasha Shiruru and I'll see you next time.